Hello again. Hello, everyone. And uh, welcome to this uh, Eden Map webinar. We still have people uh, joining us for this session. And I'm, uh, I'm very happy to, to moderate this session. Uh, my name is Vlad Mihaescu. I uh, am uh, the Eden NAP Steering Committee Chair, and I am from the Politecnica University of Timisoara. Um, the Eden NAP is, uh, it stands for a Network of Academics and Professionals, and uh, is a part of Eden, which uh, fosters collaboration between its members and supports the networking side uh, of, uh, of the members. Uh, we foster knowledge sharing uh, and collaboration through all our webinars and workshops, which we are doing. Hello again, I see we have people from many countries, from Germany, Croatia, Turkey, Romania, Sweden, Portugal, Lithuania, many, many countries, uh, uh, from India also, England, Italy, Belgium. Welcome everyone. This is very nice to, uh, to take place into this webinar. We tried to think of a different topic for today. We heard in this uh, period uh, many opinions from experts, from researchers, from teachers, from policymakers. But we wanted to know what, what this period has been for the students. We wanted to hear their perspective, to uh, see what they experienced, to find out what they love mo most about this period and uh, what they love less about this period. We wanted to see their struggles and their uh, how they thrived to overcome the challenges. And uh, in the uh, not, not the least, we wanted to know how they see the future of education after uh, this uh, whole online exper experiment. So uh, this is the topic for today. I am very happy to moderate this session as I was telling you and um, uh, no further introductions more about the topic. I want to uh, introduce already the first uh, speaker we have uh, today. So we are going to start uh, this session with Angela Sozio. She's a psychology student at Aldo Moro University in Bari in Italy. Uh, Angela is currently studying work and organizational psychology. Uh, she graduated uh, in 2019 in psychology, psychological sciences and techniques. And recently she has been attending uh, psychology of education and e-learning in organizations courses. During the courses, she had, has worked on a research project on the evaluation of microlearning modules. Uh, and as results of the co cooperation with the company uh, organizing this uh, module, she and her team have produced a literature review based on microlearning's features and the microlearning evaluation questionnaire. So join me in welcoming uh, our uh, colleagues from the student side and starting with Angela. Angela, please. So hello everyone. Firstly, I would like to thank Vlad for giving us the opportunity to take part in this webinar that I consider um, an exciting and training uh, opportunity. And I would like to thank uh, Francesca Menduni too for supporting me and my colleague Annalisa during these days, so thank you. And secondly, as a child, I was the most uh, introverted person ever. And uh, speaking in front of all of you today, it's for me the most uh, achievement uh, um, so far. So before we start, uh, I have to say that uh, um, even if uh, me, myself and my colleague Annalisa have uh, attended the same module and uh, um, uh, worked on the same project, uh, we have tried to um, answer the same question in a different way. So let's start. How could you describe your overall experience uh, with online learning uh, since the COVID-19 pandemic started? Well, um, at the beginning of uh, this situation, we were all unaware of its gravity and length. And um, at first I was uh, relieved about uh, attending lessons from home uh, because I didn't uh, have to wake up uh, uh, two hours before having to go to university. Uh, however, online um, 
um, online learning has been very functional for group works uh, because we worked uh, until late in the evening uh, without any interruption and um, uh, this couldn't have been possible uh, normally. But slowly my motivation towards the lessons and uh, studying started to decline. What are the biggest challenges you faced? Um, firstly, internet connection uh, didn't work well in uh, every room in my home. And uh, for this reason, um, I had to attend lessons and make the exams in the living room. That uh, was not so comfortable. Uh, secondly, I noticed that um, being in front of uh, a screen for such a uh, length of time um, made me restless. Indeed, uh, I find it difficult to uh, stay still while I'm eating or studying. Thirdly, uh, it was uh, said uh, that we couldn't uh, spend breakfast uh, um, and uh, breaks together, uh, talking and uh, drinking coffee. Can you share one positive example of best practices from your teachers? Uh, sure. Uh, one positive example is from the psychology of education and e-learning uh, in organizations module. The coordinator and the teacher, Maria Beatrice Ligorio, organized the, the module in a very uh, original way. Based on the methodology uh, Jigsaw, she divided uh, uh, us in four uh, different uh, um, work groups. And the aim of these numerous interactions was to um, elaborate new theories or uh, uh, perspectives for um, an uh, e learning um, future development. Thanks to this module, I had the opportunity to um, know my colleague better. Moreover, uh, I acquired many skills uh, in relation to uh, team working, public speaking, and knowledge of uh, several software. And furthermore, uh, we tried role-taking uh, didactic strategy, and I loved it so much because uh, I was the leader of um, some of the groups. And as a leader, I tried to manage the groups based on um, the needs of all the members. And uh, uh, I give them the same time to talk about their uh, original ideas. Lastly, uh, this module gave me the opportunity to work on a project uh, with an important company, uh, the International Latanzio Kids. Uh, the company offers uh, managerial services, uh, especially to public administration, uh, and we collaborated uh, with development of digital content for the online learning sector. Uh, we produce a um, literature review um, based on microlearning features and the microlearning evaluation questionnaire. A micro learning, what is a micro learning? A micro learning is a um, new didactic format. Uh, it improves uh, learning in short time with uh, chunks of essential knowledge. Uh, and the micro learning's peculiarity is based on uh, interactive features, uh, including videos, images, uh, flip cards, uh, podcasts, uh, quizzes, and uh, immediate um, feedback. So, uh, which type of act activities, technologies feel, uh, feel best suited for online uh, education from uh, your experience and why? In my opinion, um, laptops, uh, smartphones, and Microsoft Teams have been perfect instrument uh, for online learning uh, as they have uh, facilitated uh, activities such um, as work groups uh, and uh, synchronous forum chats. Uh, laptops uh, with the large screens are good for spending a long time in front of a screen. And smartphones uh, allow you to attend lessons, uh, even in situations where normally um, you shouldn't have uh, um, been able to. For example, uh, had you had a medical appointment before online teaching, you would have uh, uh, had to completely miss the lesson, um, whereas now you can log into it online. A software uh, I have greatly appreciated uh, is micro Microsoft Teams, and uh, in particular, um, its ease of use and the option of uh, on creating a lot of, of uh, subsections and uh, sharing screens with others and uh, uh, work simultaneously. What do you miss the most from the educa educational experience before uh, COVID? Uh, what do you miss the least? 
Um, what I miss the most is uh, face-to-face uh, in-person interactions uh, between teachers and students. This is particularly felt uh, because of the miss, uh, the missed opportunity to understand the student's mood and to establish uh, um, a deeper relationship between uh, the parts. And uh, what I miss the least uh, is not uh, um, to be able to uh, share documents and download slides instantly. And of course, uh, the alarm at 6.30 a.m. How do you see the future of education after this uh, crisis finishes? Um, well, I hope that uh, in the future we will have learned to recognize the importance of education and the training and the importance of uh, socialization. Um, for, uh, for this reason, um, I think that uh, the best solution uh, for every age group uh, is face-to-face uh, -face teaching instead of full uh, online learning. However, we also must recognize the positives of blended teaching and learning um, and find a good balance between the two. So in conclusion, here's my wish for, uh, for everyone, always be the best version of yourself. That's all, thank you. Thank you, Angela. When, uh, when uh, I uh, said we start the session with you, I didn't know you were an introvert. Uh, and I'm very happy that uh, uh, somehow you overcome, you overcame this uh, this challenge, and uh, you did a very good job. Um, Thank you. I uh, I suggest you all of you to to look over the questions in uh, in the Q and A section, uh, and uh, I propose we will try to give some answers after we finish all all the presentations. So uh, until then, please uh, read the questions and try to prepare uh, an answer for them. Okay. Um, the next speaker is uh, also from uh, Aldo Moro University. Uh, it is Annalisa Gian Domenico, a second year student of work and organizational psychology. Uh, during the last three months, she took part in the psychology of education and e-learning course, similar to the one uh, Angela took uh, as well. And uh, she also collaborated with uh, the same company uh, and uh, created the literature review on about the perceptions of microlearning. So, Annalisa, please, the floor is yours. So, uh, hello, everyone. Uh, first, I want to thank you for this great opportunity. And um, uh, I would like now to share my experience about online learning with you. Uh, the first question I answered to is, how could you describe your overall experience with online learning since the COVID-19 pandemic started? So at the beginning of the online learning, uh, I wasn't very happy because I attended the telematic university for the last two years of my bachelor's degree at the Faculty of, at the faculty of uh, Psychologi Psychological Sciences and Techniques, and I didn't like it much. And uh, for my master's degree, I didn't want to do the same, uh, and I was excited about finally meeting people in person. However, I realized that the online learning is way different from the telematic offer um, due to its interactivity, which is something that I am enjoying. And uh, here uh, you can see a fun picture our teacher took during uh, our last lesson. Uh, you can tell we were all in a very good mood, even if we had our pajamas on. And uh, um, at the beginning, I followed all the lessons, but then slowly I have chosen to follow only some of them. In terms of time management, I would appreciate uh, some breaks uh, during the classes to refocus attention, as we used to do in the classroom. Um, moreover, it seems that some professors uh, assume that as we are staying um, at home, we don't have much going on in terms um, of things to do. So presumably uh, we have more time to spend in front of a screen or to study. But on this point, I firmly disagree because staying at home um, also means uh, helping my family in household tasks, tasks uh, such as cooking or tidying up. And uh, some teachers get disappointed when the attendance uh, rate is low without considering that uh, in our course, uh, attendance is not compulsory. So my overall experience so far has been uh, 
pretty positive. Mm -hmm. Uh, about challenges, uh, back in March 2020, uh, during the classes in the second term uh, um, of the first year, the biggest challenge I faced was the sluggishness of my laptop. Actually, even just to open the platform we use, which is um, Microsoft Teams, uh, it took almost an hour and sometimes it didn't open at all. And um, I had to take uh, three online exams and surely I faced them with more anxiety than those I took in the classroom uh, at university. Both because I was afraid that the platform would close at any moment and because I was anxious the internet connect connection uh, would go down, things that really happened to me during the classes and even, and even uh, this afternoon actually. Uh, another challenge I've been facing uh, is um, how easy it is to get distracted for many reasons, such as the doorbell or a family member coming to the room. And one last challenge is um, how hard it is to concentrate. So uh, to sum up, uh, I think it's definitely better to go to uni, see people and um, change your environment uh, to take your mind off things. Mm. When it comes to what's needed to make the online education experience positive, I think laptop is the best technology to use for online learning, as it allows an excellent screen visibility, which helps to keep your eyes healthy too, and it's easy to carry around and um, adjust to any places. Uh, anyway, I had to buy a new laptop to follow the second year lessons, as the previous one was too old and not suitable to support the technology platform um, we're using. Mm, among the activities I consider very useful for the online learning, uh, there are with no doubt the group work, uh, which have proved to be a vibrant place for learning and knowledge. And uh, uh, at the same time, uh, they reduce the distance between students, uh, establishing a new friendship as well. Um, moreover, the group work uh, allow to fairly split the workload, facilitating the achievement of the objectives, uh, thanks to the mutual support. Uh, and uh, to give an example, uh, during the psychology of education and the learning course, everyone in turn took a role uh, with a different task. And uh, this has given us the chance to gain more knowledge and skills to increase the level of attention during the lessons and finally to take responsibilities. In terms of what I miss the most and the least about the educational experience before COVID, I miss the most the direct interaction with my colleagues, characterized by funny moments, um, exchange of, post of, of um, points of view, or just suggestions and support. Uh, I also miss coffee breaks between classes, uh, our meals together waiting for the beginning of the afternoon classes, uh, where we shared uh, mutual knowledge and chit chat. What I miss the least is the journey to go to university. I live actually 60 kilometers away from Bari. So uh, I wake up three hours before the beginning of classes and uh, sit on the train for about um, an hour. And also saving money for the train ticket is for sure another upside of the online, of the online education. Mm, the future of uh, education um, as a result of the pandemic uh, could be characterized by blended learning, including both online and face-to-face uh, -face classes. However, I have my own opinion about blended learning, which I believe should fit uh, the training context. Um, for example, for the compulsory education, it would be better to restore uh, frontal lessons. Uh, above all, for children of elementary school, as they could have some uh, difficulties uh, in sitting still in front of a screen for a lot of time. On the other hand, I think in an academic context, uh, sometimes that should be um, distance trainings, uh, even for a better time organization and a better autonomy uh, of, um, about rhythms of learning. Um, the use of different platforms uh, should be encouraged for both the possibility of recording lessons with the consensus of teacher and to learn how to use different programs. So uh, trying um, to bring out positive aspects of uh, technology. Uh, so I hope in the future uh, that the possibility to make the most of distance learning won't be overlooked, uh, using it for different purposes to improve the learning experience. So. In conclusion, my suggestion is uh, try to always have a positive attitude towards any experience and make the most out of it. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, Annalisa.
for a very nice presentation. Uh, I have to say it's uh, it's weird that you say that you miss going to the university, but uh, that you don't miss going to the, the, the road to the university, but you miss the interaction with your colleagues. How can you get the interaction if you don't get there? Uh, okay, there are, as I said, there are positive and negative aspect, aspects. So, um, of course, I miss the interaction and everything. But, um, I mean, um, with the um, uh, Microsoft Teams or even Zoom, we have the possibility to uh, have some, um, how can I say, some... Um, uh, some um, oh my god! Some, some sort of interaction. Yeah, actually, yeah, of some sort of socialization. Interaction. So, yeah. yeah. No, it, it was more more like a like a, a small joke. This this question. Oh, it could be yeah. Okay, so uh, like uh, I also asked Angela, please read the questions because we have uh, you have a question especially for you in the Q and A section, and we will get to those questions after we finish uh, the presentations. I'm sure uh, our other two speakers are. Uh, very uh, impatient to, to talk and to present uh, what they prepared for us today. Okay, so then we move uh, to the third presentation uh, of the day. We have uh, Dora Trogrlic uh, for, from the Faculty of Organization and Informatics, University of Zagreb in Croatia. She is a second year graduate student of the Organization of Business Systems study program at, at this university. She received her bachelor degree at the same faculty in 2019. During her studies, she participated in the Erasmus Plus Student Exchange Program at the University of Žilina in Slovakia, which ultimately led her to the role of a student associate of the FOI International Relations Office. Besides that, she held the role of student coordinator at the Center for Volunteering and Humanitarian Work at the faculty. Throughout her higher education, she participated in many extracurricular activities, including an innovative learning project on social entrepreneurship. Dora, please. Hello, everyone. I hope I hope you can all hear me. Uh, I'll start sharing my uh, my screen. Just a second. I hope you can see the, the slideshow. Yes, it's perfect. Okay, first I would like to thank uh, to Professor uh, Igor Balaban and uh, FOI International Relations Office for uh, huge support uh, according to all opportunities like, like this one. Uh, and to start, uh, I would like to say that uh, my experience with online learning uh, is not ideal and I am still a huge fan of uh, traditional education. Uh, and I have some kind of a love-hate uh, relationship towards uh, online learning. Sometimes I was really glad that I can uh, just listen to my lectures from my bed, uh, drinking my coffee, uh, and listen to these, uh, these lectures uh, whenever I want, whenever I can. Uh, but sometimes it became really tiring, uh, since there is always a point in the semester where... Um, you have a lot of assignments, a lot of tasks, midterms, uh, but it was quite challenging because we were uh, we were all supposed to behave and work and uh, concentrate like there was uh, nothing going on, like everything was normal. Uh, but it wasn't, and we all had problems uh, with uh, concentration, so it was quite uh, quite challenging to balance balance everything. Uh, and it kind of showed me uh, the point of lifelong learning because um, we were we were pushed in in this this type of uh, type of learning. Uh, the biggest challenges that I've dealt with, I'm sure that we all had problems with the uh, insecurity of the situation and that psychological impact. Uh, but since I'm a very extroverted person. Uh, I live close to the, uh, to, to the faculty and I used to spend a lot of time um, at the faculty, uh, hanging, with, hanging out with my friends, with my colleagues. Uh, I was spending a lot of time at uh, International Relations Office and uh, first, for, for first few days I was feeling great because I finally had the opportunity to be uh, at home, which was like rarely a situation before. But uh, after some time, I became really anxious. And um, 
anxiety and fear combined, I started having panic attacks, which didn't uh, didn't make anything easier, and it affected my uh, online learning as well because I got uh, really frustrated about everything and everything was uh, everything was bad and wrong and guilty for the situation. Uh, so um, I, I, was, I wasn't really um, looking at uh, online learning from the greatest point of view. Uh, second thing is lack of time and space and uh, infrastructure. Uh, yes, I do have my own room, uh, my own laptop, some kind of uh, privacy, but uh, since I was spending a lot of time at home, which was rarely a case before, uh, my parents also uh, wanted to hang out with me and uh, they asked me to help them with some, uh, with some things at home. And it wasn't quite easy to always explain why I need time, uh, why I need to concentrate and why it's disturbing when someone just opens my door to ask, how am I doing? And since my mom is a teacher, uh, she also uh, had online lectures with 37 year olds. Uh, she also had problems with uh, some new platform that they, that they were using. So I was kind of a student and a user support and, and everything. Uh, and uh, even though I have a lot of experience uh, after five years of studying at the faculty, uh, I'm let's say good at adapting uh, to new professor, I think that I had a problem with fulfilling learning outcomes because for some things really took uh, a lot of time to, to do by myself, even though we had, um, we had uh, presentations or, or online uh, lectures filmed or something. Uh, some positive examples. Uh, I think after these two semesters, I think that the best um, practice from a teacher was usage uh, when we had uh, asynchronous lectures, it was a usage of uh, presentations, uh, plus short video materials with the emphasis on the most important. So these video materials would be uh, 20 to 30 minutes, uh, like shortly describe the whole uh, presentation and the things that we need uh, to, let's say, learn the most. Uh, best suited activities and technologies. Uh, I would say that uh, I really liked synchronous lectures because um, I had a problem when uh, one day a week I had four lectures from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. nonstop. And I think that's a problem for concentrating uh, even when you're at the faculty. Uh, so at home it was impossible. Uh, we used uh, Moodle as an e-learning uh, platform, which we use uh, since we uh, start start uh, our lectures at the faculty. So that was kind of a good thing because we are uh, we are already used to it. And for our uh, synchronous lectures, we used uh, Big Blue Button, which is similar to Zoom, so it also worked uh, quite well. Uh, what do I miss most uh, during this whole situation is definitely a social aspect of, uh, of education. I miss just coming to the faculty, seeing people, um, working from the library, uh, and just mingling with, with colleagues. And I was also supposed to uh, go in the winter semester uh, to Spain on another Erasmus exchange, which this situation uh, postponed to the summer semester, but as the situation is still not uh, quite the best, I had to I had to give my hopes up and just quit from from this exchange, which was supposed to be uh, like some kind of a highlight at the end of my uh, my studying. Uh, for the future of education, uh, I think that traditional education is coming back in great style because I think that people really miss being uh, in the same place, uh, both teachers, students, uh, at any age, it doesn't matter. Uh, and I think that we will uh, appreciate more uh, coming to real-time lectures. Uh, but when it comes to online learning and its pros, I think that... Um, it's giving more possibilities and opportunities for, let's say, virtual uh, mobilities, conferences, uh, different types of courses, uh, which was maybe possible but for, but uh, not not in in this this uh, not not in this uh, kind. 
Uh, and in conclusion, I would say that uh, probably there is the same amount of uh, pros and cons, uh, like everything, but it is all about the perspective. Uh, when I was in a bad mood, I, let's say, hated online learning and wanted to go uh, to school, even though I, uh, I wished sometimes to be at home and just listen to my uh, lectures from my bed. Uh, and for the end, I always I wish you all a wonderful, calmer, uh, and more successful uh, year ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Dora. Wonderful presentation. Um, it is not easy to speak in front of a crowd, but it's, it, it is for sure more difficult to talk about your fears and anxieties. And uh, you are very brave for doing this. This is one of the of the sides of these uh, times, which is not so so much discussed about the psychological impact uh, moving into online has uh, on students and teachers as well. I am curious if uh, you and your mother have exchanged some good practices uh, uh, from both sides. Well, uh, she did definitely uh, because uh, I was like uh, on a speed dial <laughs> whenever she needed help. So uh, she said that in this part of, uh, of pandemic and online learning, she said that she definitely learned a lot more than she would, she would if she wasn't pushed in, in, in something like that. So uh, she definitely learned, learned a lot in this period. Okay, great. Thank you, Dora. Uh, like I asked uh, your colleagues, also please uh, read the questions in the Q&A and uh, we will get to them uh, soon. We move to the fourth presentation, last but not least, from Politecnica University of Timisoara in Romania, Alexandru Constantin Iliescu, a student in the Master Program of Machine Learning. Alexandru is also a student representative in the Politecnica Senate and Council of Administration. He started to learn this field four years ago when he realized how important it is for a student to be represented as good as possible. Alexandro is very concerned with the subject of education, being most interested in the quality assurance in the field of education. Trying to develop in this field since 2018, he's a member of the National Register of Evaluators. In 2020, 2020 taking the step towards the European Students' Union, Student Experts School on Quality Assurance. Alex, please, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. I will share my screen now. Uh, just a second. Uh, do you see my screen? Yes, perfect. Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. Thank you very much, Vlad, for the introduction. Now I will start to talk a little bit about my experience in 2020 in the field of education to present you the student perspective in order to understand that, in my opinion, this year in education was uh, hard for both teachers and uh, students. Thinking back to the beginning of 2020, our expectations for uh, education were to have a new year uh, that looks about the same as in 2019, but with the hope that some things will change uh, for, bet for the better. Unfortunately, that uh, uh, what was on our minds was not the it was not what really happened. Now, no one was prepared for what uh, 2020 has brought in uh, the field of education. And when everything took the exclusive direction online, uh, everyone was put in a position where uh, they had to do some things to adapt to the new normal. Uh, speaking from my experience, the year 2020 was not so easy for students, even if people think that uh, our adaptation was easier because we, use, uh, we use much uh, more technology every day. Going exclusively online and studying online uh, only from home does not just mean uh, knowing how to use uh, a specific uh, tool. Unfortunately, not all the students know how to organize their time um, so as not to fall into burning mode. Many of them felt that the beginning period was more stressful uh, than the period when they were physically at the university because they had more work and uh, time seemed uh, to be not enough. Some of the challenges uh, I have seen or heard from um, other students can be seen uh, on this slide. Because we did not believe that something like the pandemic would happen in 2020, not precautions, precautionary uh, measures were taken. In this way, some uh, problems 
appeared during uh, this period and solutions were found for them at that time and weren't prepared uh, before. Some of the students were not uh, prepared to study from home because their infrastructure uh, was uh, insufficient. So some universities prefer some funds to help them. Um, the problem of the adaptation was also seen in the group of teachers adapting, adapting courses and uh, all online documents has not been easy. And in some cases, the adaptation has been done over a long period of time. Uh, unfortunately, uh, in these cases, uh, the students felt that uh, they are uh, remaining in the same uh, time and not uh, develop themselves in that uh, um, field. And uh, they um, received some documentations just uh, after some time and uh, for, I don't know, one or two weeks, they felt like uh, nothing uh, is uh, going on uh, for that uh, specific uh, discipline. Uh, even if the year 2020 was a difficult and uh, full of problems uh, year, I think it made us uh, better to understand the overall situation in which education is at the, the moment. Uh, it it makes us to understand that um, education in this moment is okay, but uh, there is very big room for improvement. And there are a lot of things that uh, we can uh, do in order to have uh, better education and um, better quality in uh, education. With the help of the pandemic, uh, some things took an an unexpected turn so overnight they became priorities in this situation is uh, digitalization a, pro a process that uh, has been accelerated just so that the quality of education uh, remains uh, at the least uh, uh, remains at least at the level from the moment it takes uh, place face to face uh, i talk about uh, this digitalization here because uh, in romania digitalization uh, digitalization were a problem because uh, not all the documents were prepared for online and uh, I think this is a good thing uh, that uh, came along with the pandemic in 2020. Um, the solutions found to the problems that appear during the pandemic will remain not, no matter what happens, so that the future, at least from my point of view, has a good direction, because now we uh, had a rough period of education, and uh, for the future we know how to adapt rapidly and to uh, do the things in a better way. In conclusion, I would, uh, I would just like to say that education has been uh, greatly impacted by 2020. So in the future, I do not think we will return to what was normal before. From my point of view, in the future, a hybrid method will be used through which the disciplines that present uh, this characteristic will be transposed online, at least at the level of the theoretical component, because in my opinion and uh, in my expertise uh, in the field that I learn, uh, I think uh, most of the theoretical parts can be teach um, online and you can do the practical parts um, like hardware stuff uh, in the face to face um, uh, in the face to face way. Thank you very much for uh, attention. Thank you, uh, Alex, for this nice presentation. Um, I, I saw a lot of uh, good information. You talk about uh, uh, students' perspective uh, from uh, from. I, I think you talk with a lot of students. Being also in uh, in uh, the National Quality Assurance Organism and being in contact through your position with other universities. A short question: uh, In your opinion, how did our university, the Polytechnica, uh, did? Uh, in this period in comparison maybe to other institutions in Romania? Uh, in my opinion, we adapt uh, very well um, because, and I can say this because uh, I was uh, there when um, the board, the Council of Administration talked about what we will do now. And I saw um, 
very good uh, things that were done by the structures from our university in order to help the teachers to adapt uh, to the to the new normal let's say the new normal because in my opinion this will be the new normal um uh, the teachers were uh, the teachers had some courses where they uh, found how to use some uh, tools in order to make the courses um, more um, entertain enter with more entertainment let's say and not j just to be a powerpoint that they read and the students uh, listened okay thank you thank you alex so much for thank this you. Uh, answer um Again, thank you all for uh, very nice presentations. You did very good, uh, Angela, Nalisa, Dora, and Alex. Now we have some uh, Q and A session, and we already have some good, good questions uh, in the uh, in the Q and A section. And I want to start with a question where I see already Angela wants to answer live. A question from Malin Alander: Have you? as a student experienced any symptoms that you can relate to your distance and e-learning situation, phys physical, psychological, or others? And if uh, Angela uh, said here she wants to answer, I will let her uh, be the first to, to answer. And also uh, for the rest of the speakers, think if, if you want also to intervene afterwards. Angela, please. Um, okay, I would say that, I would like to say that, uh, um, some symptoms that I can relate uh, to distance is it's been it has been a lack of sleep and um, because I I became to watch um, series uh, TV and uh, um, I finished uh, at uh, 3 a.m. o'clock because uh, uh, I didn't want to go to sleep so that. Thank you, Angela, for sharing this. Um, yes, it's uh, it's not uh, not easy to do that. Um, do the rest of the speakers want to to answer this one as well? I can About, uh, answer also. The experience. Yes. Um, yes for me, um, I think the hard part when uh, I. Uh, when the education turned uh, exclusively online was uh, to um, learn how to organize my time in order to not uh, become workaholic let's say uh, because um, when you go to uh, the school when you go physically to the university you know that uh, you have some uh, schedule and you are there for just i don't know four hours and then you go to your dorm or you do other stuff and things like that but when all the day you are home you tend to work more and if you don't have um a perfect schedule that you try to create for you uh unfortunately uh, you tend to work much uh, much more hours and uh, because of that you maybe uh, go into a burning mode and that is not proper for your uh, health and also for your, I don't know, um, physique in the future. Okay, thank you, Alex, for this point of view. Um, do, we move, do we move to, the, to another question or do the rest of the uh, ladies want to, to say something on this point, on this topic? Okay, I, I remember Dora answered during her presentation about this and Annalisa did so in writing. So, um, I have another very interesting question here from uh, Yona Yonel. Uh, do you think that these online semesters turned you in less prepared students in comparison to previous generations with no pandemic experience? The analysis should be done both theoretical and practical uh, from the educational the part of educational development. So what do you think uh, about this question? I see Annalisa already answered uh, in, uh, in writing. Um, Annalisa, if you want to, to, to say something about this. Yeah, um, actually, uh, I just want to say that um, it doesn't mean that and online learning uh, um, 
give us uh, not so much information uh, as we could have in, uh, in front uh, face to face lessons i mean uh, it's the same if you have um, if you want to improve uh, yourself if you want to uh, learn more things so i think you have the same attitude uh, both in the frontal lessons and in online uh, lessons so i don't think so i mean I mean, for me, it was the same. So, the same prepar preparation. So, yeah. Okay. Thank you. But uh, I, I feel what you say, what you were saying is that uh, if the student wants to prepare, then it's no difference. But uh, the question is, if what what if the if the student does not want to prepare in the same manner uh, like before? If if the student does not have the motivation. How can 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 we the teachers motivate him in the online? Um, I mean, um, that I don't think so because um, our professors give us the same information uh, that they uh, would give us in the frontal lessons. I mean, so if I if I understand the question now. So I don't think so. I mean, I mean. Okay. Thank you. Um, what about uh, the rest? I see Dora wants to jump in on this question about uh, being less prepared. Yes, uh, if I may, I think that um, it all depends on the, let's say, generations, because I think that um, the freshmen will have a lot of problems later uh, because they just came to the faculty and they just kind of jumped in this whole online learning at, and let's say they do not know how uh, faculty functions in some normal circumstances. And they are now currently used to, uh, I will not say cheating, but not preparing in the same uh, amount as they would if they are writing their exams um, in the classroom. And also I think that, um, as we are finishing uh, and graduating now, we're in the last year of, uh, of our studies. Um, I would also say that probably uh, for some courses, we are less prepared because uh, somehow we already know what we want to do later and we focus only on courses that we will need in our um, career later. And the other, we just learned as much as we need to to pass for the for the grade and that's it. So I think it uh, all depends on uh, on the generation uh, and the year of studying. Okay, I agree with uh, with this. Uh, it it will feel different uh, uh, for each uh, generation uh, depending on their experience. That, that is a, this is a very valid point. Thank you, Dora. Um, we also have a lot of a uh, lot of questions already about uh, exams, about online assessment and online exams, uh, proctored exams, and so on. Um, could you jump in, uh, one of you, uh, on this uh, quest these questions about uh, online exams? What was your experience with online exams, and how were they done? Uh, the exams and the assessment uh, ways. Um, I can jump in. Yes, but, uh, firstly, I want to answer also to the last question because uh, I have there uh, an opinion. Um, in my opinion, the students will not be less prepared because of the online um, teaching. Because um, in, in my opinion, it's like this. If a student uh, wasn't attended the course in the face-to-face -face, uh, period, it will he or she will not attend in the online period. All will attend, but will be just a black screen with his or her name uh, for the teacher. But I think this problem needs to be viewed uh, from two parts. Uh, I think there are problems with the students because they uh, doesn't attend uh, 
uh, to the courses or uh, they do other stuff in or in um, other stuff and not uh, learning but uh, i think we need to see this uh, problem from the teachers of uh, from the teachers view and i think some teachers need to understand that uh, to be a teacher means to learn every day and if you are i don't know a person that uh, knows how to do his course for uh, for 20 years and you don't want to adapt to the new stuff that is used now uh, that's also a problem for you as a teacher and you need to understand that you need to learn how to make the students to attend your classroom and uh, to make them to learn what you are teaching because for me uh, to have a teacher just that uh, just reads a PowerPoint is not enough. I can do that uh, on my own whenever I want. But if the teacher now in, a, in uh, the online period will talk with the students and not just present some theoretical parts in order to do its, uh, to do, uh, its hour, his or her hour, uh, will engage the students in uh, this uh, discussion and will have better results and the students maybe will learn the things in uh, another way and better. And talking about the exams, I don't think this period uh, was, I don't know, uh, proper for copy or something like that. Uh, I think the students that learned before uh, are learning now and their uh, I don't know their uh, thi uh, their things and uh, and the things that they are uh, they were that they were done in the past uh, these things uh, persist now even if uh, everything is online but the students that copied before uh, of course they tried now to uh, to see how you can do the in the in the online uh, exam but i think uh, this uh, also um, is a thing that the teacher could uh, um, the teacher can see if something like that is happening and uh, can try some other approaches in order to uh, don't have such uh, such a problem but i don't i don't mean here to have i don't know a lot of cameras but i think you can have um um discussion exam and not a uh, written exam and in a discussion the students in my opinion cannot uh, copy on or cheat if he or she knows he will tell you rapidly the answer if he or she doesn't know he will stay five minutes and the answer will not come okay thank you alex for your, your opinions thank you uh, let's see uh, if there are other uh, how, we, how are things happening with exams and assessments uh, in other countries let's see in italy if angela wants to say something about this about the exams Okay, yes. Um, I think that um, um, take exams in uh, online uh, learning uh, um, and from home um, don't uh, uh, bring us to be less prepared, but uh, I think that uh, for many of us uh, it, is, uh, it has been uh, less, uh, less anxious, uh, yes. And um, but uh, not less prepared, uh, not I think that. And uh, how are how are exams done? How many exams? No, no. What was the way in which uh, exams were taken? Oh, what type uh, of exams did you take? And if there were some proctoring methods to to stop you from cheating? Um. I did uh, oral exam with uh, always on teams and uh, uh, one, uh, um, yes, one uh, uh, written exam, yes. And uh, it was uh, with no problem. Okay, thank you. Uh, do Annalisa or Dora want to, I see Dora wants to say something about the exams. Yes, Dora, please. Yes, uh, well, since we have a lot of uh, midterm exams during the semester, 
Um, we mostly have written exams, and uh, since we are using uh, e-learning platform Moodle since uh, our beginning of the of the studies, we are used to taking uh, like little uh, quiz on every course. So uh, our exams were mostly organized as a Moodle quiz. And uh, while writing our exams, uh, we all had um, our uh, cameras on, uh, pointing to us and our computers. So we had to be uh, had to be prepared for uh, all of our exams. Um, we do not have oral exams during the during the semester. We only have written uh, written exams. But uh, when it comes to um, like big big exams uh, and be in in the, ter in the terms, uh, we also have oral exams like um, on on big blue buttons. So everything everything works quite quite well. Thank you, Dora, for this. Sorry, I was uh, I muted myself. <laughs> uh, thank you for your uh, uh, insight. Um, I, I want to apologize to all the uh, people who ask questions, and we don't we don't have time to to go through all of them. Uh, it's very good to see that there is such a big interest in this topic, and uh, uh, you, you you shoot a lot of questions to for for our students. And uh, I encourage uh, my uh, colleagues, uh, my co speaker colleagues, to try to answer in uh, in writing also to some of the questions. I saw also some questions related to how this period, and we, we are slowly moving to uh, to the end of this webinar. How the, did this period uh, influence your uh, career choosing uh, and uh, your perspective about your future? Amalisa, could you try to, to give an answer to this one? Yeah, sure. So actually, um, even attending the uh, psychological um, of education and e-learning course, I, um, I mean, um, I found like an interest in this, um, uh, in this, um, uh, how can I say, um, of in this argument, I mean, uh, and in the future, I think that um, I can choose uh, to work even in an e-learning context because uh, I really interested uh, interesting uh, in this. So um, actually, at the beginning, I wasn't so technological, uh, but then uh, attending uh, uh, online learning. Um, I, um, I improved my uh, skills, so yeah, if I, I mean, okay. Thank you, Anna. Uh, um, do, do the rest of you want to, to say something about uh, this? I see Angela uh, turn the microphone. Um, uh, before this period, uh, I didn't know the um, existence of the psychology of education and e learning in organizations. And um, during this uh, uh, semester, I, um, I loved it. So it can be, it could be a, a, a professional future, in my opinion, for me. That's very good to hear. Thank you, Angela, and best of luck with this. Uh, uh, try to try to see if it works. Um, okay, um, let's see. We 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 still have time, uh, maybe for one question, and uh, then we can uh, we can uh, stop. There are so many good questions. It's difficult for me to to choose one. Um, it was a question. I want to take a question from YouTube as well. A question from Federico Puleo, and uh, he was asking uh, mainly on. Uh, uh, Annalisa and uh, Angela, how did you manage the first reaction of shock that came along with the start of the lockdown? Did it affect the way you see the university overall? But I think this question can apply also to, to the other speakers. So if you can uh, answer this one. Um, 
So at the beginning, uh, I wasn't excited, as already said. So uh, I was looking forward to meet to meeting people in person after my previous telematic experience. So. Um, Yeah, it was really, uh, like a shock, yeah, but uh, um, I always stayed positive about this. Okay, thank you, Marisa. Do any of you want to, to, to say something about this question related to if the, this shock uh, made you uh, change your perspective on the university, your opinion? Okay, then um, I think, uh, unfortunately, uh, our time together is up. Um, again, sorry for all the questions that uh, uh, did not uh, get an answer. We will try to uh, write them down and uh, try to, to get an answer in some other ways. Uh, I want to thank all participants for attending today's webinar. And uh, uh, especially I want to thank uh, the courageous and brave students uh, who uh, uh, spoke today about their experiences. Uh, Annalisa, Angela, Dora, and Alexandru, uh, you are all very uh, well prepared and uh, uh, I'm sure uh, you, can, uh, you can be proud of yourselves and uh, of what you did uh, today and also through your experience in, in this past year. Uh, don't forget that we have an uh, Eden chat session on Twitter right after this uh, finishes. So look for the Eden chat hashtag on Twitter and uh, stay tuned for more webinars from Eden and Eden. Thank you all and have a nice evening. Thank you, bye. Thank you too. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye.